So good evening everyone. Welcome to the first batch in new syllabus. Okay. So because uh, you know you are very lucky that from four papers in group two it has become three papers and in group one it has become three papers. So therefore only six papers you have to write and uh, then you are lucky enough. Okay. And uh, when it comes to article ship you are not lucky because compared to the new set of intermediate students, you have to undergo three years of articleship, isn't it? So therefore, uh, that way you are not happy or blessed, but in, when it comes to CA final, yes, you are, okay. But try to understand something here that we are dealing with CA institute. You know what is CA institute? Better after foundation and intermediate. So, when they are reducing uh, the 8 papers to 6 papers, so what you should think is that whatever difficulty that they are going to give in that 8 papers, they are going to do in 6 papers itself. So, therefore, it is going to become a nightmare to clear the papers now. Okay. So, but one insider news also I wanted to share with you all that is uh, usually you uh, know whatever the central council meeting related to this new syllabus changes etc and all when it happened uh, so i interacted with some ccms central council members that uh, you know will the standard of ca will come down because the number of papers are coming down so what is the future etc and all so they, they are clear that the standard is not going to come down the same difficulty level is going to be there and the same pass percentage, all those things are same. And now the importance is more on to the job side than the practice side. This is what I heard because even government is also not that much keen on giving uh, many roles to chartered accountants. So they want to take control, but we don't know how it is going to unfold in future. But as on today, they want to cut down many unnecessary nonsense audits and all. But did GST audit gone, you know that. And uh, sooner or later, I feel income tax audit and even uh, you know other uh, petty audits are there. Now these and all will also go off. And it's only going to be the start audit and we don't know when that will go. So that is, uh, that, that is a mindset I am talking about. The government's mindset is like that. So why sir like that? Reason being, you know, they don't want to trust some external professionals because the professionals of late are not having the high integrity when it comes to practice. You might also have seen like today how the practice is going on. So, we need to please the clients, correct? Even though in auditing we study that auditors are independent, but I do not think so that we are really independent. Okay? So, we need to please the clients and uh, many times you would have also experienced uh, that in bank audit and all, you will go, you will find uh, a number of things and you will report. But finally, when the principal comes for finalization, many things that you identified will not be there in the audit report. Correct? End, end it will be like take the previous year audit report, make some change, changes and bring the new audit report that is only going to happen. So now I am not telling that everyone is doing this kind of practice, but this kind of practice is also being done. So that is the reason why government's mindset now has completely changed as to what is the need of them. So let us have our own people to do all the audits. So that is they started with GST now. Now they recruited a lot of IRS into department itself and they created a very big wing called as GST audit wing and you might have seen now maybe if you are in the article ship still you might have come across the situation that lot of clients of your principal so audit and all will happen. I mean to say not big big corporates even some decent traders wholesalers this kind of people also GST audit is happening. So, small, small uh, service sector businesses also they are taking up for audit. So, reason being, you know, they want to do it internally and that is where the role of CAs in future will be more on the professional side rather than on the practice side. So, therefore, job that is what I am talking about. So, now when it comes to job, then the difficulty and the standard everything needs to be maintained. Otherwise, no, the corporates will not uh, take the number of CAs, no? then it will become like engineers. 
wherein lot of engineers will come out and they don't know what to do so they will turn out to become swiggy delivery boys and uh, you know amazon flipkart delivery boys that kind of situation should not happen that's why ca institute is clear that they want don't want to produce the massive results and all secondly group 1 is actually you know uh, like relatively three papers but three are strong papers la they have made into self paced course so three papers only you need to and all three are closed book so they want to make it mediocre but when it comes to group 2 one paper is a open book system what is that integrated business solutions it's a open book system which is summation of all the papers what you are studying at final level which means that is not a new paper as such like your existing syllabus so if you take uh, elective paper you have you know even this uh, economic laws then you have international taxation like that but these are all independent subjects you have to study that also even though it is open book system you have to study but when it comes to integrated business solutions in new syllabus a multidisciplinary case study which is based on summation of all the syllabus which means definitely a student that too with open book system he is able to get 50s not an issue then where to keep the torture so dt idt so dt idt is going to become the toughest subjects in ca final group 2 and in group 1 as usual fr that is as usual fr and audit afm that much difficulty will not be there but fr and audit is going to become very very difficult and the sample already started in the existing itself may 23 exams which was just completed and november 23 exam which is yet to you know happen so if you see may 23 audit and all they made it very very difficult so this is how the trend is going to become even in new syllabus also then so you have to give more importance now for dtidt if you are planning to write group 2 in may 24 or november 24 because now the questions are going to be little complex even the law has also become more complex nowadays because they are keeping on adding lots and lots of provisions in order to plug the loopholes okay so when initially i took gst classes so some of you might have attended my intermediate uh, gst hardly 40 to 50 hours i completed entire gst that much only it was very less you know but today if i need to take the same intermediate portion i need to take minimum 80 hours it has doubled so why is that same syllabus not same syllabus in the name of circulars in the name of notifications so they have made a complete change you might have studied uh, gst in intermediate some three years before correct so before your article ship and in these three years many things have changed and the basic structure though remains same but on the top of that lot of lot of other things are there and that's why the complexity of law has also become difficult why like that because people are basically intelligent we indians are intelligent what we do is that they create a provision and we identify a way to escape that provision so to remove that they will make another provision you understood so that's how the law has become so big now so that they, they will say this is how you need to do and we will identify so what if we are not doing this way okay one rule will come and again one notification will come no no you should not interpret this way you should interpret this way like that one circular will come thank god case laws are not much reason being the tribunal is yet to be notified so you have uh, some basic idea like usually when we have any dispute first we will go to some appeal like in income tax commissioner appeals that is the lowest level then the next stage will be called as tribunal so itat in income tax it is called as itat and in company law it is called as nclt and in securities laws it is called as sat security supply tribunal like that there is a tribunal and above the tribunal only high courts and supreme court we make we go for appeal but 2017 the gst law started today we are in 2023 
still GST 18 not yet notified. You understood? Which means where all the cases are pending? Appeal stage, first appeal stage. They could not go to second appeal. Why they could not go to second appeal? Sir, first a tribunal should be there not to make an appeal. Tribunal not yet notified. Now only they have notified and mostly from August, uh, September, they are telling that, you know, we will enable it and by September end, it will be happening like that. But they said this three months before, but only when it comes, we need to check because this thing they are telling from the last three years. Okay. So, therefore, what happened? Now, lots of cases are only at the first appeal stage. Some people are going to high court and supreme court using repetition. There is a concept called as repetitions. Using that repetitions, they go to high courts and supreme courts. So, that is why we do not have that many case laws like in case of direct tax. In direct tax, if you see for every chapter, so 10 to 20 case laws will be there. But like that, we do not have in syllabus for GST yet. And we do not know whether it will be applicable or not in future. So, that is depending upon the study material when I say releases we will, but as far as my knowledge is concerned, as these are all only repetition, so few cases only are there. So, it is okay, we can remember that. But going forward, what if the tribunal is notified, then tribunal will start giving few decisions, thereafter high court, supreme court, etc. and all. So, still it is going to become more complex in future. Okay. And Next thing is that, so this particular batch, regular batch, our focus is more on learning the subject thoroughly and completely. So, it is not exam point of view. So, our objective is not to study from exam point of view, but incidentally, we should also get coverage from exam point of view, but that should not be the main objective. That should be incidental objective only, but main objective is what? Learning the subject thoroughly. And what is the advantage of this? Now, when you have complete command over the subject, you will definitely get good marks in CA final. That is the there byproduct. But what happens is that after you qualify, there are now lot of openings in indirect tax department. Now, every organization like how they have, you know, a separate people team who are working for finance, they are creating a team for taxation. You might have come across. So, lot of jobs are there. I have seen lot of job postings in LinkedIn in other places and all indirect tax uh, executive or indirect tax manager like that. So, lot of different different openings are there not even in corporates that is in manufacturing sector or service sector even in big fours also they are recruiting separately in indirect tax okay very recently uh, you know some uh, two months before you know results came may 23 results came and uh, thereafter one student got posted in lnt lnt main office itself in gindi there is a main office of lnt and there itself one student of ours got posted and uh, he was posted into indirect tax department wherein uh, his package was 18 lakhs per annum ctc so even after cut etc and all at least 15 lakhs he will get that's actually a decent pay for a fresher in today's context that to in indirect taxes so, he was very much interested in that subject and he scored somewhere 80 marks, okay. And uh, he said, sir, the classes helped me a lot in attending the interviews, performing well in the interviews. That is where I got selected because usually there will be one technical round, sir. But here in this company, as it was crucial for them because they are mainly doing lot of contracts, construction, etc. and all, two technical rounds they conducted. Both technical rounds are related to indirect tax only and I performed really well. It was so much helpful for me in attending the regular batches. So that is the objective I am talking about. You understood or not? It is not just the exam. Beyond exam also is very, very required in today's context because I do not know what type of articleship that you have underwent in the three years. Some of you might have concentrated only on audits. Some of you have con would have concentrated on income tax only because GST focused firms are very less. There are very less number of firms in Chennai, even in India, 
who are focusing on GST. So, mostly it will be like legacy firms who will be focusing on audits, bank audits, stat audits only and income tax returns though normal it will be there. So, that is the reason why I will take the classes with the assumption that you have not learnt anything in articleship. Is that okay? So, if you know good, if you do not know better, so that you know if you know now then there will be conflict. I will tell something, you will have something in mind. Uh, so, it is okay that is uh, after class, everyday class, we can discuss that whatever doubts that you have. If you do not know better why I said because nothing is there in your mind, it is easy for me to write on that. In an empty paper, we can write anything. Na? So, therefore, if you have not underwent any articleship related to GST, superb. If you have underwent also, it is okay, nice, it will be good for interaction for us. Okay? Then, uh, Therefore, what happens even the practical aspects also we will be learning, not just the law. Indirect tax, law and practice is not there. Law or practice is there. You understood what I am talking about? Law will go on one side, practice will go on another side because there will be something in portal, GST portal, which will not be there in law. There will be something in law, which will not be there in portal. I will give you one example. That is, what are the various modes of deposit into electronic cash ledger, like that one provision is there, which says the following are the modes of deposit into electronic cash ledger. Electronic cash ledger is a ledger which is required for making payment of taxes. So, first we need to put money into electronic cash ledger and using the cash ledger we need to pay the liability, GST liability. So, for that we have NEFT, RTGS debit card, credit card, net banking, then uh, we have over the counter deposit, cash or check, then UPI is there, IMPS is there. But today you go into the portal and open the chalan, you will not have even debit card, credit card option also. You will have only three options, net banking, NEFT, RTGS, over the counter. But loss is six modes, but here we have only three modes. Now you understood what I am talking about? Law will go on one direction. So, bureaucrats sitting in the finance department, finance ministry, they will create some provision. And this side GST network, which is actually maintaining the portal, so will go on one direction. I do not know when this will coincide, okay. It may take some time, but that is why I told you that law will go on one direction and practice will be on different direction. And one more change also I will tell you uh, where it has a difference like this. In input tax credit, there is a chapter called as input tax credit. In that input tax credit, so there is something like if I close down my business, I am doing business for quite a long time. Say, I have got good uh, input tax credit, some accumulated uh, input tax credits I have. Now, I am shutting down the business. How I am shutting down the business? I am transferring the business to you or purchasing my business. When you purchase a business, the provision says, whatever is the input tax credit that is there with the transferor can be transferred to the you know transferee along with assets even input tax credit also can be transferred this is how it says now in portal if you enter the transferee gstin gst identification number of another state suppose if you are in another state in portal we cannot transfer Law did not restrict. Law says if you transfer business, transfer R to transfer E, input tax credit can be transferred. Law says this way. They did not say that transfer E should be in the same state. For example, transfer of Tamil Nadu, darling, transfer E should also be in Tamil Nadu, like that, nowhere in the law. Nowhere it is in the law. But in the portal, they created this restriction. Now, if you enter the transferee registration number in another state, you cannot transfer the ITC. You got it? So, this is the cases where I am talking about that law and practice sometimes will not go hand in hand, sometimes it will be completely different. So, these aspects also we need to learn and we will be learning even though it is not from exam point of view. You understood? Then second thing, our way of learning will be bare act methodology. So, I will not be, you know, telling you this is the provision, okay, and uh, you need to do some questions and answers, no. 
that is not going to be our objective even before that we will try to read for every section the bare act so what is given and how we need to understand that and thereafter we see the analysis part but when you study you need to study from the analysis part you don't have to read the bare act when you are reading at your end but when i am taking the classes i will take it from the bare act and thereafter analysis and thereafter problems and solutions and illustrations this is the structure will be okay so how we are going to learn each and every section bare act analysis problems and solutions okay and now that is application either in the form of illustrations or in the form of case studies or problems and solutions etc so that way we will be learning each and everything but when you read you don't have to read this first part bare act you don't have to read you need to read the analysis problems and solutions got it so directly sir why don't you take from the analysis itself so that i cannot do reason being you need to know how it has been given in the lot because tomorrow the section may change can i guarantee you or can you guarantee me that this section will be forever the same no we are dealing with law when we are dealing with law which will change based on the real time environment example recently one change has happened that on gaming platforms they brought in gst so online money gamings are there na rummy circle or dream 11 betting uh, apps etc and all on them how much gst 28% gst so 28% is a big amount actually because definitely people who are winning so those who are winning or losing on all amounts there will be 28% that is the funniest part here sir income tax also okay sir on winnings only they are collecting tax sir but in gst it is not like that for example you place bet i will also place bet i want the bet ha huh? you lost the bet on you also 28% burden is there on me also 28% burden is there you understood what i am talking about so this is something really crucial so now what gaming company started okay only if we are in india so indian government will do this way so therefore they shifted their base to foreign huh? they shifted their base to foreign when they shifted the base to foreign now we made amendments in the law here stating that even though the supplier is outside india and providing services of online gaming etc to persons in india so that supplier outside india is required to pay gst you understood or not now we made the provisions accordingly so like that there are many changes that happen from time to time you know because of the change in the environment in which we are living in so tomorrow on influencers you no know, youtube lot of youtube influencers are there so financial influencers are there other influencers are there because that is a very good marketing today so now on that influencers they are not properly disclosing the income and all actually they need to disclose that income and they need to pay gst actually it will become import of services for them ad revenue what is the revenue to youtubers ad revenue how ad revenue they get they post something in the youtube content they think they can post so they will put some vlog so morning they will get up and they do something on that day so that they will make as one video and they will put okay so you know everything for example kid they will uh, send to school that also they will put as one vlog okay or they will take uh, their family with some uh, mall and all shopping complex so there also they will put no prior no privacy and all everything open good that still they didn't come to the bedroom okay until that point of time it is good there is something called as home tour bathroom tour and all is also there if you understood and this way they do content and what they do they insert the ads so when these ads are being watched by the people so because we don't go for youtube premium na we go on a basic youtube free version only ads and all when it come we will close the video again open the video again close the video open the video like this three times if you do ad will go or skip ad we will give it's okay why to pay premium and all for that so now this revenue what they get is actually import of service import of service is covered under rcm rcm means they need to pay gst many days they are escaping now the government is going to become you know bring more stringent provisions on them 
what I am trying to convey to you is that the environment in which we are living in, new new ways of earning money will come. And when the new ways of earning money comes, automatically tax department job is won to collect the taxes on them. For that they create the provisions. So the sections will change. It will not be the same forever. So once you learn how to understand the section, interpret it, application, etc. and all, in exam also it will be helpful to reproduce the language. That is important because not all questions will be numerical questions. Numerical questions means good like financial management, advanced financial management. So numbers are there, only numbers you need to do something and you need to get the answer. No one will be bothered about you know what you are writing there. That you know tax is not like that. You have to write many things. Even if it is a numerical problem also, you need to write the justification, provision you need to write. Are you understanding? For example, there is a question related to computation of GST payable. So you, you just write, okay, this is the liability, this is the input tax credit, this is the net liability. Like that if you write, you know, you will not get full marks. You need to write as to why this is taxable, why this credit is available or not available like that for everything what you are writing in the answer you have to give the justification in that is called as notes if you are not writing the notes you are going to lose the major marks in the exam you may write for 100 marks also but you will not get more than 40 or 50 so reason being answer is correct but the justification for justification only you will get the marks but not for the purpose of arriving at the answer. Keep this in mind. So now when you are writing justification, so what you need to have the knowledge on the law. So when you read the bear act, now you can reproduce the provisions to some extent, so that is sufficient. So that is the objective of reading the bear act. Okay. So therefore, our classes will be based on bear act methodology when it comes to GST. And uh, you are aware of the portion. Na? So what is the portion that we have? Yes or no? So in new syllabus, uh, it is actually paper 5 here. Paper 5. And paper 5 indirect tax loss is for 100 marks. In that what they did, GST they made as 80 marks. Majorly it is GST. Customs and foreign trade policy is only for 20 marks. Previously it was for 25 marks. Now they made it as only 20 marks. Okay. So and they have cut down many chapters in customs. So previously lot of chapters were there like duty drawback and appeals, offenses and penalties, many things were there in customs. So they have removed to a greater extent whatever is really required. So the I can say the heart of the customs law only they have kept and foreign trade policy also foreign trade policy itself is a separate subject in uh, MBA, MBA finance foreign trade policy that is exim policy they call it as export import policy that itself is 100 max paper means that much portion is there but for you they have cut down majorly and they have given only the crux. So little bit information which you need to know that much only they have given. So this will be for 20 marks and uh, this we will not be learning in a bear act methodology. Reason being for 20 marks fully we cannot learn the law. So whatever is really required wherever law is required there alone we will see the bear act. Remaining places and all and mostly customs is not like GST here more of procedural aspects how import will happen, how export will happen, what is the meaning of baggage, all those nitty gritties and all will be there. So that we will be learning in the chat presentation, wherever really through law we need to learn, there we will be learning in law. So that we will be learning in a different manner. But GST this 80 marks will be fully on to the bear act methodology only. And you will be provided with uh, three books here. So. You are provided with three books. This is the volume one. So already we started uh, dispatching it to online live students. There are some online live students also who are attending these classes. Okay, and uh, so you are attending face to face, and some online live students. Not much. Few students only are there, and therefore whatever doubts that they are asking, that also I will be clarifying. Whatever doubts that you have also, 
but don't disturb during the uh, in the sense like discussion say for example one concept i am taking i will complete that concept and after completion of that concept if you have any doubts you ask me not necessary that you need to wait till the end of the class also even during the class also you can ask because then there is no difference between face to face and google drive na you can watch it offline also at your own pace but uh, mainly the doubts whatever you get you just make note somewhere i am not asking you to wait till the end of the class also but the concept should get over maybe your doubt might get clarified during the discussion itself correct so you just make note of that and once that concept gets over i am moving on to the second concept then the transition if you have any doubts you ask that i will clarify even for the online students also you can chat and online students once the class gets over if you want to unmute yourself and ask any doubts you can ask me after the class gets over okay then uh, this is volume 1 book which we started dispatching so total you will be receiving uh, five books here okay so this is resource book volume 2 that is also gst for gst itself there are two volumes volume 1 and volume 2 and volume 3 is your customs and ftp your customs and ftp is volume 3 and one solved workbook so this solved workbook will contain all past exam questions even though this is new syllabus but the subject is not new correct indirect tax is not new it was there even for the last 5 years so in the old syllabus whatever are the exam questions etc every exam question including rtp mtp icai study material new icai study material questions everything will be incorporated into this book and it will be provided to you okay and one more book also we have given to you so three volumes of resource book that contains bare act you don't have to buy any separate book for bare act i have given in that plus i have also given the analysis and illustrations in that book three volumes of resource book plus summary so for example you see this uh, one chapter okay so this chapter number 2 for example i am telling you so there is one chapter number 2 called as supply under gst so in this supply under gst we will be discussing lot of bare act analysis etc and all and even assignment questions i have given in the book itself so this assignment questions and all is for practice in the class itself we will practice sometimes sometimes i will give you for homework etc so that you need to do and finally i have given this summary after each and every chapter every chapter i have given this summary so once a chapter gets over if you want to quickly revise you don't have to read that you can read even the summary which is given at the end of each and every chapter okay so this three volumes of resource book will be sufficient for you you don't have to refer the study material and all right now i have given only volume 1 volume 2 and volume 3 i cannot give you now reason being icai has not at released the study material as on today so today is september 1st and you even today morning also i have opened and saw one cover page they have given module 1 like that after clicking on that cover page coming soon like that it is there no nice so they have released the teaser okay so therefore i don't know when they will be but what i heard was september 15th september 15th they will be giving the study material launching the study material so but even if they release it in september 15th also i don't think so all the modules they will be releasing reason being so you are appearing for which attempt may 24 so may 24 may 24 Six months before is what? So within six months, within six months, that is thirty first October two thousand twenty three. All the changes that happens up to thirty first October two thousand twenty three will be applicable for your May twenty four exam. Clear? Right now we are in September. how 
they can release the book with all the amendments they cannot release the book okay but what you did sir i have given you the book volume 1 so that contains all the amendments yes because i selected the chapters which are basic chapters in that so whatever amendments that already came up to august i have incorporated up to august end so now this september and october if there is any changes in this volume 1 book also that during the class itself i will incorporate so that you can make note of that if any mostly that many changes will not come in the chapters what i have given in volume 1 so what are the chapters i have given in volume 1 if you see so we have a introduction that will not change there are no amendments in that this is basic concepts only and thereafter supply under gst this is at ca intermediate you would have studied little bit and levy and collection under cgst act like who is liable to pay gst reverse charge mechanism forward charge mechanism etc then levy and collection under igst that is meaning of interstate supply intrastate supply supply in territorial waters what is the meaning of zero rated supply like that few aspects then what are the various exemptions that we have in gst then concepts like time of supply place of supply value of supply value of supply deals with how to do the valuation of a particular transaction then input tax credit so usually on uh, liability so we don't have to pay full liability whatever gst already we paid we will get it as a credit and we do the set off so that concept is input tax credit and then composition scheme so these are the chapters mostly whatever amendments that are there up to august i have incorporated in this this itself easily it will take one one and a half month for us because this is the major area actually so therefore by the time we complete volume 1 it will be somewhere like october first week or second week now we will know what are all the changes that could come so that incorporating in and even study material also will come by that time so i will be giving you volume 2 volume 3 and solved workbook then so initially we have provided you two books volume 1 and mcq book that mcq book is nothing but uh, MC, uh, application of provisions only so a lot of questions i have given and that is for practice at your end even in class also we will be learning some mcqs but even for you to practice suppose for example you completed one chapter and if you want to apply that you can practice the mcqs that's why one mcq book is also provided to you okay and uh, therefore what is the tentative time by which I can provide you volume 2, volume 3 and solved workbook by October mid. By the time we complete volume 1, I will be giving you the other 3 books. Okay. And uh, therefore, this is the cutoff date. That is the reason why I could not do everything even perhaps. I do not know what are the extra topics that they have included in ICI study material because there is one new chapter that they have added called as ethics in GST okay because nowadays people are following unethical practices so they have brought in ethics in gst i don't know what ethics in gst tax itself you know we cannot follow ethics and all in tax if we follow ethics and all in tax then we have to earn and give money to government only correct or not so now tax planning has become part so i don't know maybe they are going to bring some tax avoidance means what tax evasion means what and as a chartered accountant what are the ethics that you need to have etc and that uh, one bullshit topic so that will be there and uh, that they are going to add so that i don't know what they will be adding so that's the reason why incorporating that i will give you the other books then suppose if you are appearing for november 24 no i mean your first attempt itself is november 24 not that uh, you will not clear in may 24 and you will write in november 24 that's not what i mean to say so please don't take it in that way suppose if you are appearing for november 24 also this lectures will be equally useful so for november 24 all the amendments up to so 30th april 2024 will be applicable but usually for this both may 24 and november 24 the finance act will be same 
Finance Act is same that is Finance Act 2023. Finance Act 2023. Finance Act already came. I incorporated all those amendments in this book itself right now which you have. Okay. So now any changes that happens between this date. Okay. So this period only will be extra for November 24 and it will not be much. From May to November at time usually amendments will be very less. Hardly 10% maximum, maximum, but from November attempt to, to May attempt, usually the percentage change will be 20 to 25%. This time approximately 25%. So I cannot tell you exactly, you know, what are the amendments, but in measuring in percentage, I am telling you. So from November 23 attempt to, to May 24 attempt, 25% of the portion got changed. So, which means all those things we need to learn newly. That's why usually May 24 or May 23 or May 25, every May attempt, it is a best attempt for tax paper. Why? Because from amendments itself, they will be giving a lot of questions. So, that's what every time I tell to students. Suppose if students, many students will be asking me, Sir, uh, I want to write one group only. So, you suggest me which group I should write, etc. and all. If it is May attempt, definitely that group which is having tax paper. So, group 2, final level group 2. So, if you have any thought like whether you want to write for May 24 or November 24, please write group 2 in May 24. There are many advantages of writing group 2 in May 24, I will tell you. Advantage number 1, as there are major amendments, in indirect taxes, even in income tax also, because income tax also new finance act. As there are major amendments this time, so therefore, usually every May attempt, approximately 16 marks to 20 marks will be from amendments itself. Okay, so there itself you will be getting 20 marks in your pocket. And amendments, that extra incremental portion only you need to learn. From that you will be able to get 20 marks means it's good only now. So, remaining you can score from other areas. That is advantage number one. Advantage number two. As you are going to write the first attempt, usually what I have observed, I have seen uh, in my journey in CA, three times change in syllabus. First, initially I have seen P1, P2, at the time when I studied P1, P2 final, thereafter I saw PCC. Then that is the first change I saw. Second change I saw was IPCC, that CPT, PCC, then CPT, IPCC like that. Then third change I saw was, you know, foundation, intermediate like that. And now fourth time I am seeing. In the last four journeys, what I have seen is that every time when there is a change in syllabus, the first two attempts, usually first attempt, they copy paste the questions from study material itself. This I have observed. Majority of the subjects, almost all subjects also perhaps, they will not create new questions because they know that students will not be covering the study material. So, they will be of the impression that, so they can lift the questions from study material and they will give. So, if you want, you can check May 2018 paper, FR 80 marks came from ICA study material only. FR 80 marks by 80 marks. IDT 90 marks from study material. You understood what I am telling? This is the history. Okay. So, May 24 exam, if you are thorough with ICA study material, definitely trust me. So, whatever number that you are thinking, like 80 or 90 in indirect taxes, you will get. Because direct, directly those questions will come. Are you understanding what I am telling? So, that is why you have to write tax paper in May attempt. These are the two advantages that you have. One, amendments. Second, lot of questions I take from the new study material itself. So, therefore, if you have any remote thought also, whether I should write for May 24 or November 24, you know, which group I need to write as you already joined for the classes. And that too you joined very much early. Usually students, what I have seen, what I have observed is that they take the coaching six months before the exam. So, that six months before the exam means what somewhere December or January they will take the coaching, correct, usually. 
but you started even well in advance. September itself you started. So which means that you know you have ample time. So better you should definitely write group 2 in May. If you have time also write group 1 in May. If you do not have time, if you want to push now, you try to push group 1 only for November. Do not push group 2 for November. This is my humble suggestion and request to all of you. Okay, done. And next thing, sir, suppose if I am writing for November 24 group 2, then what should I do if I am attending these classes? Nothing. You attend these classes. And that amendments from uh, October end to April whatever are there in my YouTube channel. I have a YouTube channel by name Tarun's Brainery. So in that uh, YouTube channel every 6 months I will be uploading the amendments. So I will be uploading amendments in this. I will record and upload the amendments even revision also. So every attempt I have been uploading uh, every 6 months, rocket revision like that, videos are there, even for intermediate also I have done and uh, for final also I will be doing it, for your batch also I will be doing, for next batches also I will be doing. So this revision will be there, even amendments also will be there, so that will be helping you. Suppose if you are appearing for November 24, attend this batch and that amendments alone you watch there so that it will be sufficient for you to write even for November 24 exam done because the finance act is going to be same that is the reason okay next. So this batch I have planned for 200 hours so that is the number of hours which I have planned usually I will be taking uh, 170 to 175 hours I am adding the 25 hours extra because you know as I want to cover the entire study material questions also in this batch. Whatever subject if I need to discuss that itself will take 150, 160 hours. Plus in addition in the new study material I want to cover every question because I already told you from the study material itself there is a chance of asking the questions. I want to complete all the questions in ICA study material. Also lot of problem solving I wanted to do that is the reason why this batch I have taken for I made the schedule for 200 hours and the tentative batch completion date will be November end. So initially I thought of doing it in 2 months but practically 2 months it is not possible reason already I told you because up to October end whatever are the changes that are required to be there. So that is the reason why the batch will go up to November end. Okay. So yes, initially we announced it 2 months only but sorry I cannot do because it is not in my hands. I thought study material would have been released by August itself. So they have not done that. That is the reason why even we have postponed the batch also. Initially it was August 17th and we postponed it to September 1st. So this 15 days plus extra some time reason being uh, you know you, you do not have classes for some 10 days in the middle ok. So I am just giving you a clarity about the batch functioning. We are starting from September 1st and the batch completion will be November 30th ok. And in between from September 25th to September 25th to October 6th you do not have classes. Okay. You do not have classes during this time, reason being some students have personally messaged me stating that sir we are still in article ship, so that is what it is there, they will not give us time, so and uh, we cannot miss the classes etc and all. So that is the reason why that 10 days I have extended, actually 2 and a half months I plan as I postpone the batch to September 1st, so that 15 days plus this 10 days. So that is why it is going up to November end ok and the timings also already you are aware. So 6.15 pm to 9.40 sorry 8.45 pm do not worry. So you have to go home now. So 8.45 pm and this is on this is from Monday to Saturday. Whereas Sundays it will be 7.30 am to 
1.30 pm. Okay, this is on Sundays. Suppose if you have some other, uh, you know, like some ICI, some exams, is there na? What is that? ITT, you know, orientation, etc. and all. At that time, we will see. Maybe if it is in Sunday, if it is falling in Sundays and all, we can have it in the afternoon. So, without having trouble. Sunday alone, we can shift even in the afternoon. But morning, I feel it is good because your mind will be fresh. And uh, up to 1.30 means, so even for lunch, you can go and you can have good lunch and you can sleep, you know. So, at least one Sunday only you will be getting. So, why that Sunday also I wanted to, you know, I don't want to torture you and that is the reason, okay, nothing else, okay. Even for me also, so one Sunday I will get, so there is no difference between you and me, okay. You are attending the classes, I am taking the classes. So, we both do not have holidays and all, okay. So, that is the reason why I just made it 7.30 to 1.30 because it will be like, it will go in a flow. Afternoon means after lunch you have to come and you have to sit, the absorption rate will be less. So, that is why 7.30 to 1.30 if required, we can shift in the afternoon on. So, if there is an issue in the morning, some because of ICA, etc. and all. So, this is how the batch will be functioning. And next thing, as I told you that you will be receiving total 5 books. So, 3 resource book, 3 resource books with summary and now this should be your only source, only source of preparation. You do not have to refer to study material because everything I will be incorporating here. You do not have to refer to study material, you do not have to buy any reference books, etc. Lot of money you paid here. So, even beyond that you should not spend, okay. So, I will ensure that whatever money that you have paid for that everything you are getting, okay. So, you do not have to spend 1 rupee extra out of your pocket. So, beyond this, whatever you have spent so far, okay. So, this will be your basis for preparation including the summary I have given there itself. So, which means that every chapter after completion you can see the summary and one day before exam also you can revise this summary and go for exam. So, this book will be helpful to you till exam date, okay. And even inside exam hall alone, no, do not take. Up to exam hall, you can take this, okay. Then next thing, solved workbook. So, this solved workbook is for practice here. Now, you learnt some students, you know, will not be very much uh, good at learning or understanding through provisions itself. Anyhow, I, I will take through illustrations. But even then, when you practice it more on to the problems and solutions, you will be able to recollect the provisions. So, that is the reason why solved workbook and MCQ book. MCQ book is also given to you. These two are mainly for practice. But this fully covered, full coverage will be there in the class itself. 3 volumes of resource book, each and every page we will be learning in the class. But this is for your practice. So, in the class, some 30 percent to 40 percent coverage in the class itself, okay. Then remaining questions, remaining MCQs and all for your practice. Done? Next. Thereafter, you know, you will also be uh, given the test series. But this test series, total you will have 8 chapter wise tests, 8 chapter wise plus 2 full mock test. Okay. So, for this also you do not have to pay anything. And this 8 chapter wise test, I am not starting immediately. So, reason being, you know, now it is too early to start. After November exams, I will be starting this. So, now at P, B at peace, you start learning the subject, you start attending the classes and after November 23 exams, okay, actually we will be at the batch completion stage, end stage. At that time, I will be giving you the schedule. So, total portion I have divided into 8 tests. Each test will be of 50 marks, 
okay each test will be of 50 marks and this two full mock test will be 100 marks and this will be between November to January and this will be in February month okay so you will have even March and April so two months before itself the mock test we are conducting okay and these question papers will be evaluated so what you need to do is that this you do not have to come here and write this test series what we will do Saturday afternoon we will give you the question paper in the app. So now you need to write the answers, scan it and send it to us by Monday evening. So you will have Saturday, Sunday, Monday because I do not know your uh, timing, schedule, availability etc and all. So you need to spend one and a half hour in these three days, Saturday, Sunday and Monday. I do not want to spoil the lecture time also. I cannot conduct it in the lecture time. So therefore, you have to do it at your home. You need to write the test. You need to scan it and send it to us. We will do the evaluation and we will give you the evaluated answer sheets and even for every test, video explanation also will be provided to you like how you need to write it, how many marks you will get if you write step marking so that you will understand the presentation aspect as well. That you can do only when you know the subject, when you learn the subject. So that is the reason why I am pushing it to November. So by November majorly it will be over and when you write the test also it will be like a revision and weekly only. So weekly one day only you need to spare for this. So therefore you can definitely do this as a revision exercise and followed by one two mock tests also will be there. So this will be more than sufficient to you. So you do not have to enroll for any test series also. Usually CA final students will enroll for test series now that you do not have to do. This is covered in this itself. Okay. And this is up to February month. Thereafter in the month of March and April. So there will be rocket revision. Rocket revision during March end. Okay. And this rocket revision will be approximately for 30 hours. This will, I will upload it in my YouTube channel. So now by November you learn the subject once and whenever you want to practice, you practice it from the solved workbook and MCQs. Thereafter what you learned will be tested in the form of test series. So mock test also will get over by February and in the month of March end there will be revision. Okay, and even mighty 50, the top 50 questions, the mighty 50 questions that will also be during the March end for around some 10 hours. Okay, so this 40 hours will be a free revision that will be uploaded in my YouTube channel. You can do that. And therefore, by this time, actually, three revisions got over. First, you attended the batch. Second, during test series you are learning once and third, this rocket revision for 40 hours including mighty 50 questions. Now one and a half day before the exam, you can revise these videos and you can keep the summary whatever you have and you can go to the exam. Done. The plan is clear. You have any doubts in this? Got the confidence that you can do? Now after this, you tell me how many marks you are expecting. I wanted to hear. Okay, So I have told you what are the deliverables from my side. So now you should tell me how many marks you need. You should expect no, something. So how many marks you should? 85 marks. Okay. So 80 to 90? Huh, minimum. Minimum. Minimum 80. Minimum 80 not less than that okay i'll tell you the reason indirect tax so far you have not seen like i have not seen a student who came and told me sir i failed in indirect taxes they will say i failed in group 2 but indirect tax i got aggregate like uh, exemption or i got 50 plus but i failed in group 2 this is what i heard i never heard one student coming and telling to me i'm not boasting 
even if i am not taking class some other donkey is taking class also indirect tax students will not fail 40 to 50 and all easily they will be getting but when it comes to the other subject like direct taxes and uh, even auditing fr these are all the subjects where there is a possibility of failure even getting 25 28 that too for november up to november 23 you should be very very happy that one stupid subject went out of the ca curriculum it's called as scmp you know really you are in the good phase a golden phase of ca you know i can say you know the stupid subject there stupid subject i'm not talking about the content in the subject i'm talking about the examination content wise good definitely we need to learn all those things we need to learn this learning is actually fun there we can learn but whatever we learn if you write there they are not giving marks that is a problem okay so many students you know will fail in group two so they will complain sir because of scmp scmp how many marks you got 20 sir 18 sir 28 sir why you are like that you did not study properly no sir i have thoroughly studied sir then what is your problem i don't understand the question sir question how that question what answer to write i don't know sir i read everything sir but they give a case study sir for that case study i don't know what answer to be written so it was unfortunate and some of the students will prepare it as practical subject and they will go and get a surprise that 70 marks will be theory there really so that's the reason why you are lucky enough that subject gone self-paced so even uh, slowly slow and steady okay and uh, how the self-paced will be details not yet shared na so mostly it will be like uh, at your home only at your home only and how you wrote advanced ITT <laughs> you only know but of course they will be bringing uh, some kind of proctoring uh, you know mechanism and all you need to enable the webcam all those things they will keep or if they feel like first attempt second attempt will be like this only after this they will understand that every student clears the self pace so then they will say no no come to the exam center and you write like that they will say but first few attempts no issue and all and uh, therefore you know in this six papers if you get 80 marks no here the extra 30 marks will be compensated in the other papers so that you will not have any aggregate issue because direct tax and all the volume is so big that it is actually a third group in ca final yes direct tax is a third group in ca final trust me so whatever portion that is there so that will be there in uh, like two three subjects together is what direct tax is and no student you ask any student you completed dt portion ah huh? completed what completed so forget revision so completed no and now the mechanism itself is like they are learning revision itself as the main and they go for exam thanks to bb sir okay so and, you know and uh, you know his, his uh, book called as compact book and every student will buy that book and they will read that and they will go to the exam thinking that that much only is the direct tax portion you know that has become a situation that's why you know getting 60s and 70s in direct taxes is very very difficult unless otherwise in your articleship you have a very good exposure towards direct tax it will be very difficult so then the other subjects also not that much dependable or bankable subjects to get 60s and all but indirect tax if you prepare wholeheartedly definitely you will be able to score 80 to 90 and the maximum marks what our students i have seen personally was 88 marks so every attempt last attempt also may 23 exam also one student got 88 marks and even before that attempt also one student got nivedita like that one student got 88 marks she was an all india second rank and last attempt also it was some 83 marks so all india second rank so like yes decently 80 plus and all lot of students 
So you can uh, even see at the end of the book also I have given how many students got 80, 70, 60s and all. It is easy to get in indirect access here. It's not because I am taking the classes. It's because they have studied it properly. We will put it that way better. Correct? Because otherwise those students who got 40 also it is because of you only Nasser like that you will ask me. So because they have prepared it well. So they got 80 plus marks and you also prepare well, you will also get 80 to 90 that is achievable, okay. Then next thing I need if, you know, I said what are the deliverables from my set, uh, my side and uh, you also have good, very good expectation 80 to 90 marks. Now let's see the reality. What is the reality? Dream is good, but to achieve the dream, we need to put some hard work. Correct? What is the hard work? I will take the class definitely and I will also put some hard work from my side. Now what you need to do? Three things. Number one, be regular to the classes. That is very, very difficult. Today you cannot, ah, okay, no, you cannot. Sir, I don't know which batch number also this is. That many batches I have taken, okay. I had good hair like Dhoni. Now I have become like this. So you can see, you know, how many batches I have taken. And, uh, you know, because of students only, I lost everything. You know, because of the subject and the students, no. You will not be regular at all. You achieve this first. That is the first thing that you I want from you. You should be regular to the classes. Sir, what if I miss a class? Some rainfall may happen or some extreme situation may happen or fever etc and all you all will be provided with 40 percent backup what is 40 percent backup means 200 hours into 40 percent is what 80 hours 80 hours you will be able to see the lectures the entire 200 hours of lectures will be given to you as a backup in the google drive and in this 200 hours, you can watch any 80 hours. You understood what I am telling? Not necessary that you need to watch only first few classes, etc. Entire lecture number 1 to lecture number 75. Everything will be with you. But in this, what you need to do is that you can watch only for 80 hours. Any 80 hours you can watch. So that backup will be provided. This is for meeting the extreme situations like maybe health issue or some other issue etc. Then how the backup sir uh, like what is the frequency in which you will upload for example today lecture got over by tomorrow afternoon 2 pm or 3 pm we will upload the lecture. So therefore tomorrow's lecture will start at what time 6.15. Now the time is there now you can watch that and you can come that you can do or you can watch it at a later point of time also you are being provided but don't depend on that backup please. See I am giving to you this only for extreme situations but don't take it for granted. Nothing can replace the regular way of attending the classes. Why you join face to face? You can buy the Google Drive also now then. Correct? Yes. So lot of students will purchase the Google Drive lectures. Even in Chennai, if they are outside Chennai, they don't have any other go, they cannot come for uh, attending the class. Even in Chennai, you know, next street only, next street. So that uh, CIT Nagar, T Nagar is there, na? next street, actually walkable distance. But we got an order, Google Drive order. So I didn't get, why, why like that? No, yes, there are many issues like article ship issue, the torture is there. So they are not allowing them to go for the classes and uh, exactly 6.15 class means they have to leave at least by 6 o'clock that 15 minutes, 6 o'clock you know maybe that principal is one sadist who will give work only at 5 o'clock. So what we can do? You know it, it will happen. So that is the reason why they go for Google Drive. Then why you came for face to face? Google Drive itself you can continue. What is the reason? So that you want to regularly attend the classes. And Google Drive means you will buy it, you will keep it and you will not watch it, correct. But if it is face to face, you will come and sit in the class and without knowing, even if you are 
you know, coming here and sleeping also, I will not let you sleep. Uh, you will be somehow able to watch the class and complete the portion. That is the objective, correct or not? Then be regular to the class. That is the first requirement from you. Can you do that? Second, be attentive in the class. Being regular to the class is one aspect. Being attentive in the class is another aspect. Reason being, as we are spending 200 hours in the classroom itself, so that 75% you should learn in the class itself. Because you don't have time actually. You don't have time. Because indirect tax is not for 600 marks. Indirect tax is only for 125 marks. How? No, no, no. Paper 6. Paper 6. So, in paper 6, definitely indirect tax is also there. So, therefore, some 25 marks there. Okay. So, therefore, this much only. You have other subjects. So, remaining time you need to allocate for other subjects as well. So, that is the reason why in the class itself, try to learn to the maximum how much ever you can learn, you try to learn in the class itself. Done? That is why you should be attentive in the class. Third, so you need to trust me. No, you have to. So, what sense are whatever I am telling to you that you need to follow like test series, whatever it is and thereafter, uh, after test series, the revision, follow the books, etc. So, then definitely you will be able to get it. Okay. So, these three things you can do. What are the three things? Only three things. Only three. Be regular. Be attentive. Just trust me. Okay. So, that is enough. You do not have to do anything else. Okay. And as I will be taking the lecture from the book itself, I have not created any PowerPoint presentations, etc. and all. I will be taking the lecture from the book. I have given you the book. From the same book, I will be taking the lecture. And any extra information, I will be writing in the notes. That extra information, you can write it in one small notebook. You just maintain one small notebook. You do not have to buy one big long size notebook and all. So, a small notebook you can have. In that notebook, any extra points if I am telling, any interconnections, etc., that alone you make note. Or even if you want to do it in a sticky note also, you write it in the sticky note and paste it in that appropriate pages. But sticky note little big size you buy. Otherwise, if sticky notes and all, no sir, it will go away. Then buy one small notebook. In that notebook, you write extra information, whatever I am telling. And to that notebook, you give the page numbers. You give the page number to the notebook and in the main book, you write down the notebook page number because main book is what you will be reading. You will not read the notebook. Notebook is only just extra information only. So, in the main book only you will be reading. So, this notebook page number references you give and in that main book itself, you know, whatever extra informations, etc., like some changes, some references, etc., that you do in that. So, sticky notes usually, you know, it will go away. Pa. It will not stick for a long time and all. So, that is why I have one small notebook. Even scribbling pad is also okay. So, that is just for extra information, some problems and solutions for that only. Okay. And uh, let us start with the discussion now. I have given you for the last uh, one hour as to the batch introduction, how it is going to function, all the informations I have given to you. Now, we will start with the first chapter in GST. So, if you see here the syllabus, before that I just wanted to ask you one question. How many of you did not study GST at intermediate level? GST at intermediate level. I think if you are appearing for November 20, uh, May 24, definitely you should be learning GST only. So, but anyone here? old indirect taxes, excise, service tax, no, I do not think so, okay, good. So, then you, ha you, you have an idea about the syllabus, definitely about GST, I am not asking, huh? chapter names, yes, chapter names, I, I do not, I will not ask any question from that, you know, I know, so you are all amnesia people, okay, you will forget, I know that. I will not ask any question from there, but you know the chapters. What they did at CA final now is that 
that chapters which you have at CA intermediate level, they are not going to test as you know case study like not question answers but as case studies okay these are all intermediate portion actually so like supply interstate supply intrastate supply charge of tax including reverse charge classification exemption time of supply place of supply you did not study at intermediate value of supply input tax credit etc these are all actually intermediate topics but in intermediate, CA intermediate, you would not have studied entirely. For example, input tax credit, you would have studied only up to section 18. Conditions for availment of ITC, apportionment of credit, blocked credits, input tax credit in special cases. But the next three sections, so job work, input service distributor, etc. and all, we have at final level. Then in time of supply also, you would not have studied time of supply in case of change in rate of tax like that. So that is there at final level. So place of supply completely you have not studied at inter, it is fully there at final level. So these chapters, these are actually volume 1 book. These chapters what we have is actually volume 1. So but here how the questions will be? Case studies. So which means they will be coining a question that has the implication of multiple chapters. You got it. So it's not like we study input tax credit means from input tax credit only they will give a question. No, they will give a question. In that question, we will apply input tax credit chapter provisions, time of supply provisions, value of supply provisions, exemption provisions, everything we will apply in that. You got it. So which means we cannot study chapter wise and forget one chapter when we are reading the another chapter. No, every chapter should be in your mind because interlinking is very, very important in indirect taxes because the type of questions which we are going to get is case study type questions. Already that they have done in old syllabus also, but only one question they gave. First question, question number one, 14 marks question. For example, no, I, I just wanted to show you the question. Of course, you don't have the idea about it. So, I just sh show you the question as to how it will be. So, you can see previous exam question papers in that. So, like this question number 1. In this question number 1, so, this question number 1 itself will go into 2 and half pages, okay, 14 marks. Many transactions they have given, see, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, around some 10 to 12 transactions, sometimes 14 transactions also they give. In this, some purchase transactions will be there, some sales transactions will be there and we need to compute the net liability. So, this question actually covers value of supply, input tax credit, exemptions, then FCM and RCM, who will be liable to pay GST, place of supply, For covering 5 chapters they created this question. Means if you need to answer this question, you need to learn 5 chapters. Are you getting this? In new syllabus, you are going to get questions like this, okay. So, therefore, that is how there is a complete change from old syllabus to new syllabus. On this volume 1, the type of questions will be case study type questions, means interlinking, interlinking provisions. And then the remaining chapters are there, procedures. In this procedures, in intermediate level, little bit you learn registration, tax invoice, credit notes and debit notes, then e way bill returns payment of tax this you have studied only basics but here it will be little bit deep plus accounts and records extra then refunds job work liability to pay certain cases these are all like other chapters at ca final level which you have not at all studied at ca intermediate okay so this will be like independent questions on these chapters, there will be independent questions. Independent questions means what? 4 marks, 5 marks question. So, one small case study they will give application of that case study. 
or refund. One question they will give on refund, refund computation. Interlinking provisions will not be there. On these chapters, it will be independent. So these are all small, small questions, four marks, five marks questions. So usually what they do is that, so they give one question, in that parts they will give, A, 3A, 4 marks, 3B, 5 marks, 3C, 5 marks. So 5 plus 5 plus 4, 14 marks. That's how they coin the questions. So on these and all, it will be independent questions only, okay. Until the time a mock test paper they give, we don't know how the question paper pattern is going to be. Assuming if they follow the same old pattern, I feel they will give two case study based questions. Question number one, question, question number two will be two case study based questions. Then question number three onwards will be like, uh, you know, this, uh, what is that? I told you now four marks, independent questions and all. So that total, they will be giving you six questions. You need to write five questions. So five into 14, 70 marks and 30 marks will be MCQ. That's how the standard paper will be. So we don't know, but this is how it could be is what I am expecting. But two case study questions though will be guaranteed, okay. Then customs and FTP 20 marks, but CA Institute will never give this as a separate area in the question paper. In every question, they will be giving this as a conjoint question. For example, question number three. A and B will be GST, C will be customs because they know students are so smart that they read only 80 marks. They give this 20 marks uh, choice and in that 80 marks, they will be trying to score 60 marks like that. Even CA Institute also know that. That's why if you need to attempt a question, you need to definitely know customs. Otherwise, you will not be able to attempt that question. So that's how they will be making. So this you cannot give in choice. You have to learn this also. Then the first chapter is introduction to GST, already you have little bit idea or knowledge about it, it is just brushing up of our basics, okay, nothing else in this. So first, what is tax, what is tax, what is tax, huh, someone will ask na. Because you are learning CA final, what is tax? It's a source of revenue. Source of revenue to whom? Government. Why government needs revenue? Because they are incurring some expenditure. What is that expenditure called as public expenditure? Example, laying down road, providing a water facility or uh, providing lot of freebies, mixie, grinder, you know, bicycle, laptop and a thousand rupees during Diwali, Pongal. So these are all some benefits, so which government will be doing. Even ration, they give free rice, free vegetables, free kerosene, free gas, everything they give free, you understood. So for this, they need money. For meeting the public expenditure, they need public revenue. And what is the major source of public revenue? Tax. Tax is the major source of public revenue. And this public revenue major source is tax. In the tax, we have two types of taxes. What are they? Direct tax and indirect tax. What is the basic difference between these two? So if a person pays that amount, in turn recover from the next person, it is indirect tax. Whereas if he bears the tax, then it will be called as direct tax, correct? And what were the old indirect taxes that we had in the past? excise duty, service tax, VAT, etc. like that some old indirect taxes we had. What were the old indirect taxes? You can see excise duty. When this excise duty was levied, I mean now uh, what event leads to levy of excise duty? Manufacture. Whenever you manufacture some goods, you were required to pay excise duty, okay. And indirect tax is a event based taxation, event based taxation means what on happening of a event we will be required to pay the tax, okay. So therefore income tax also event based taxation, income tax is not event based taxation, there it is more like you know only when you earn income you need to pay the tax. But indirect tax is not like that, 
it's not based on your income it is based on the event on happening of which you need to pay okay now you might have got this doubt sometimes that there is something called as duty and tax what is the difference between duty and tax because excise duty customs duty like that but uh, service tax even gst goods and uh, services tax what is the difference between duty and tax any idea so irrespective of your revenue when you have an obligation to pay some amount to government it is called as duty example i manufactured some goods i throw it in bay of bengal even then i have to pay excise duty are you getting this sir i am not selling it i am not selling it i just manufactured it i did not sell it but i have to pay excise duty i imported it not for further sale i imported it for my own purpose even then i have to pay customs duty but tax will come into the picture only when there is some kind of economic activity that is happening then tax will come you understood or not for example i am selling i got some consideration that's where the tax will be involved so that is the basic difference between duty and tax okay so irrespective of consideration involved if i need to pay i am obligated to pay that is called as duty but generally when there is some kind of consideration if i need to pay that is called as tax this is the general meaning but in goods and services tax we have some exception wherein even if there is no consideration on few transactions we need to pay gst so there are some transactions which we will be learning in chapter number 2 so there are some transactions on which we need to pay gst even if there is no consideration involved so what is the general meaning of duty versus tax i told you if irrespective of consideration if i have a obligation to pay some amount to government it is called as duty for example i am importing some goods but i am not going to sell it but i have to pay customs duty that is called as duty whereas tax when it will come i mean indirect tax tax okay not income tax indirect tax so when the tax will come so only when there is consideration involved in the transaction okay for example i am taking classes freely to you here okay should i pay any tax no not required of course i am not taking freely that's why you are not able to tell the answer so for if for example if i am taking classes freely without charging any amount from you whether i need to pay any tax no why there is no consideration involved and i give you freely some goods should i pay any tax no why not required to pay any tax because there is no consideration involved are you getting this that is the basic difference but but please listen but in gst there are few transactions even if there is no consideration gst is payable on those transactions what are those transactions we will be learning later you got the difference between duty and tax now so indirect tax is what type of tax event based taxation so for every duty and tax in indirect taxes there is something called as taxable event what is taxable event means the event on happening of which tax is payable that is known as taxable event what is taxable event come on the event on happening of which tax is payable that is known as taxable event in indirect taxes so every tax or duty will have a event upon happening of that event this particular duty or tax gets attracted like that what is the event for excise duty manufacture what is the event for customs duty import or export what is the event for service tax services providing services what is the event for sales tax sales making sales are you getting this so in the past in the past means which date i am talking about before 17 2017 because gst in india is effective with effect from 17 2017 so before 17 2017 we had lots of indirect taxes pa all those indirect taxes put into one mixer and we grinded it and we got gst you understood 
So GST is not something which is new tax, but various old indirect taxes got subsumed into GST. That's where a new tax they renamed as goods and services tax. You got it? Now, what are the various old indirect taxes that got subsumed into GST? We need to understand. Now, we will divide that into two. Levied by central government, levied by state government. What were the old indirect taxes levied by central government? Central government. Excise duty levied by? Was levied by central government. Then, central sales tax. Sales tax, but which sales tax? Central sales tax. Levied by central government. Then, customs duty. Levied by central government. And service tax levied by central government. So, tell me what are the four indirect taxes levied by central government in the past? Excise duty, customs duty, central sales tax, service tax. Okay. In this, customs duty not subsumed into GST, the remaining three got subsumed into GST. What are the remaining three that got subsumed into GST? Excise duty service tax, central sales tax got subsumed into GST. Okay. You can see it in the second page. So, excise duty was levied by central government. When? On goods? No, before. All these are before, in the past only. In the past. So, in the past means when? Before? 1, 7, 2017. So, before 1 7 2017. Before 1 7 2017. That is the meaning of past. So, excess duty levied by whom? Central government. When? Event. Event. On manufacture of goods in India. And there was state excise duty also, state excise duty on alcohol and some goods like OPM etc. So, there used to be some state excise duty on alcohol excise duty was levied by state government. Okay. Then next customs duty, customs duty levied by central government on what imports and exports. In this customs duty, we had basic customs duty and additional customs duties. Additional customs duty is called as countervailing duty and special additional duty. What is this countervailing duty and special additional duty? Now, think of a situation. Before 1-7-2017, okay, you have imported a smartphone. Smartphones was there before 1-7-2017, ah, it was there. It was there from 2010 itself. Okay. So, to before 2017, you imported a smartphone. I purchased a smartphone which is manufactured locally. Huh? So, I will have what burden before? Before 1-7-2017. I am purchasing locally. What burden I will be having? Excise duty. So, for example, I am purchasing a Micromax mobile. Micromax was there. They were manufacturing smartphones, correct? So, what will be the burden of taxes on me? Excise duty. Excise duty on manufacture of that mobile. They will pay and in turn recover it from me. Then, sales tax. They will pay sales tax and they will in turn recover it from me. Now, whether mobile is completely manufactured in India or any raw material is imported? Raw material is imported because fully it is not available in India. Na? So, we have to import certain raw materials, say raw material imported. On import of raw material, what they would be paying? A customs duty. Now, on me, there is basic, that is customs duty on raw material and manufacture, excise duty on manufacture and sales tax on sales, correct? You are importing the smartphone. On you, what burden will be there? Only customs duty. Now, you tell me, so people will try to import or will buy locally? Import, because the burden is less, burden is less. Is it good for the economy or bad for the economy? Why bad for the economy? More imports will lead to what? Foreign exchange outflow. 
correct more imports lead to foreign exchange outflow foreign exchange outflow will lead to deficit balance of payments correct when deficit balance of payments happens what will happen we have to make the payments our inflow is less and outflow is more we need to make the payments in foreign currency so means the demand for the foreign currency will increase automatically what will happen to the price of the dollar it will increase so it is not good for the economy so therefore you are given the job as a finance minister now you have two choices you need to control the import you got it you need to control the import you have two choices pa choice number 1 remove remove excise duty and sales tax on locally manufactured goods so that people will buy the locally manufactured goods and they will stop importing you got it or second alternative you put the excise duty and sales tax because the difference is what i am local i am purchasing locally manufactured sir i am paying customs duty excise duty sales tax you are importing smartphones so you are paying only so customs duty more or less matching correct but what is the extra that i am paying excise duty and sales tax if it is removed definitely on import customs duty will be more because you are paying customs duty on fg finished goods i am paying customs duty on raw material so import burden will be more than the locally purchased so locally purchased goods will be increased option 1 option 2 what is another option you put the excise duty and sales tax even on imported goods also then the total import cost will increase then also locally manufactured goods will be you know purchased more you tell me which option you will choose as a finance minister second option why second option super here very good future you have here so good as a finance minister your job should be what revenue generation earn as much money as you can you got it so you have to bring in more money to the treasury so that we can construct lot of statues bridges etc and all and uh, you know that will be used for the welfare of the people you got it so therefore uh, we need more and more taxes good future you have here very good future i never expected this okay so you def definitely will not think from people point of view you know are yaar already he is purchasing something and on that you are putting some extra taxes and all you know it's okay fine so therefore and this idiots we are also idiots actually when we import some goods there are lot of duties but what we think ha huh, we pay for the product we are not paying for the taxes example today one imported car we are having okay you know this uh, mini cooper like that one car is there how much that car 50 lakhs 50 lakhs is it really worth 50 lakhs you know how much is the customs duty involved in that in that 50 lakhs approximately 15 lakhs is customs duty approximately 15 15 15 lakhs which means when you import a mini cooper car in that mini cooper car one suv is inside you understood so 15 lakhs here yeah, 15 lakhs approximately that much we are paying but you ask any person who is importing that car what he'll say are yaar i purchased 50 lakhs worth of car because they attach the cost to the car they they see that this value of the car is 50 lakhs but that is not that much value that value is hardly 30 lakhs only but why this extra amount that we are paying we are paying in the form of tax and duties we think that you know the product is so good that's why we are paying this much amount that is the advantage in indirect taxes that's why people will not know will not have the pinch of making the payment you understood or not for example you paid 11800 rupees for this classes okay what you will be thinking rear he is getting 11800 rupees but it's okay fine he will be taking classes we can attend his class rear out of that 11800 as if entire amount is going into my pocket i have to pay na to government also yes sir no 1800 i have to pay gst income tax i have to pay and because of your blessings and all i am in no slab rate of 30% i 
you know. So, I crossed uh, the second slab and all for long back, okay. How much second slab? 10 lakhs. I crossed that path, okay. So, everyone would have crossed here. Then why I should be taking classes? So, not that I am in crores and all, but I am in the third slab path. Somewhere like 40 lakhs, 50 lakhs like that only I am earning. And, uh, huh? no, no sir, no tax audit yet sir, okay. So, therefore, that and all is not applicable or you are thinking that much money I am making. So, good think only, okay. So, therefore, you know 30 percent I have to pay as income tax, what is there with me? And that to these stupid fellows, 44 ADA and all also, they are not giving that much benefit, only 50 percent only they are giving. And thank God for this assessment year, they increased it to 75 lakhs. And uh, okay, but even then 50 percent only. But 50 percent only, you know, profit and all 50 percent, no, only 40, 30 like that. But even then, I have to make more amount, otherwise I have to maintain detailed books of accounts, all those things, it is headache. So, 44 ADA is best. So, then I have to pay 30 percent. So, all these tax I am paying, you understood or not. So, but what you think, you think that okay, fine, I am paying for the lecture. A beggar who buy a biscuit packet also will feel, I pay the money for the biscuit. It is like looting from the public pa. Indirect tax is like, I am standing, government is coming and taking pickpocket from me without knowing me. We understood or not. But income tax, I am giving. It will pinch me. You understood. I my hard earned money, I am giving. But indirect tax is not like that because we attach it to the product or we attach it to the service. So, we will not think that we are really paying it. But every one of us is paying indirect taxes. That is why if you see the indirect tax revenue share, you know, which is having more share. Ah, our subject is only great, you understood or not. So, therefore, indirect tax revenue is more compared to income tax, you got it. And therefore, you are right as a finance minister. So, what you will think of to put excise duty and sales tax on imported goods also. But what is the taxable event for excise duty? Where is it manufactured? How you can levy? Correct. Can you levy? No. Even though you are a finance minister, certain things you cannot change. Na? Can you change the preamble of the constitution? Can you change the law just like that? No. For that, there is a procedure. You go to the parliament and you need to present it and you need to get the majority approval, etc. and all. Big process is there. Just like that you cannot change, correct? And you cannot change the basis of the law itself. Every law will have a preamble. That preamble you cannot change. That is the objective. So, that you cannot change. Because if you need to change that, you need to change the constitution. And constitution amendment is a very difficult process. GST is a law wherein both central government and state government will levy the tax. But this cannot be changed just like that. So, we need to change the constitution because in constitution union list and state list like that it is there, seven schedule to the constitution, there we need to do the amendment. So, without making constitution amendment, we cannot make the change in the law and all. You got it. So, therefore, you cannot levy excise duty and sales tax on import. Because excess duty on manufacture of goods in India, sales tax on sale of goods in India, but these goods are sold from outside India to India, these goods were manufactured outside India, you cannot levy. But what you can do, you can create a duplicate tax, duplicate. If others are creating duplicate, that is offense. But you can, because you are finance minister, you understood or not, you can create duplicate. What is a duplicate tax name, countervailing duty? and special additional duty. Countervailing duty is a duplicate of what? Excise duty. Special additional duty is a duplicate of what? Sales tax. Countervailing duty levied on imports, special additional duty levied on imports. Why countervailing duty pa? To counterbalance excise duty. And why special additional duty? To counterbalance what? Sales tax. Okay. Now, Service tax was levied by central government when on provision of services. Even on import and export of service also, we were required to pay service tax. And in sales tax, central sales tax, 
Central sales tax was levied by whom? Central government. But central sales tax has got one special point here. Even though it is, it was levied by central government, but it was collected and retained by the state governments. Means central sales tax revenue was going into whose pockets? State government pocket. Levy by CG. Collected by SG. So, CST levied by central government on interstate sale that is from one state to another, but collected by state government. Now, these four are the indirect taxes levied by central government. In this, which got subsumed into GST? Excise duty got subsumed into GST. Customs duty, no. Excise duty, service tax and sales tax. Customs duty not got subsumed into GST. Why sir, customs duty not got subsumed into GST? They do not want to touch the international trade. See, a new law, GST is a new law and it needs to, you know, implement, it needs to be implemented properly till that there will be some hiccups and if it is domestic, no issue, we can balance that. But international trade, if it gets affected, so the situation may go in any way because if international trade is affected because of the new tax law, then if imports increases and exports decreases, that is a so dangerous situation like inflation and all will increase. For example, you see Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka and Pakistan, what has happened there? So, they, their inflation is so big that, you know, the imports has affected to a greater extent. So, the balance of payments, the rupee will depreciate like crazily and it so happens that one dollar will become 2000 rupees, 3000 rupees. Now, we cannot imagine now that and all. So, that is the reason why, you know, they do not want to touch the international trade till the time the GST law gets settled. The moment GST law gets settled, the future is like customs also will come into GST. You got it? So, at present, at present, today, customs is outside GST and remaining three got subsumed into GST. Customs, maybe in future, it may come. But as on today, customs is outside the ambit of GST law. You got it? But in customs, we studied two additional customs duties. What were they? CVD, SAD. CVD is to counterbalance what? Excise duty. SAD is to counterbalance what? Sales tax. Whether excise duty got subsumed into GST? Whether excise duty got subsumed into GST? And as CVD is a duplicate of excise duty, CVD also got subsumed into GST. You got it? Then SAD. SAD is to counterbalance what? Sales tax. Whether sales tax got subsumed into GST? Yes. So, one second. So, whether SAD got subsumed into GST? Yes or no? Yes. Why? Because sales tax got subsumed into GST. So, SAD also got subsumed into GST, understood or not? So, that is with respect to this and now you tell me how GST is formed, first point, how GST is formed by subsuming various old indirect taxes. What are the old indirect taxes? Excise duty, service tax, sales tax. CVD, SAD. This we will put it in a different way. All indirect taxes levied by central government except customs duty got subsumed into GST. However, CVD and SAD under customs also got subsumed into GST. So, on import, are we required to pay GST? Yes. Why on import we need to pay GST? Because in the past we were paying CVD SAD. Now CVD SAD got subsumed into GST due to that reason. So on import we need to pay GST. You got it? Now see this how GST is formed. Taxes subsumed into GST. Take page number 5. Take page number 5. You can see the page numbers on the top part. That is only the page number. Below, whatever page numbers that I have given is for, uh, you know, reference purpose. 
every chapter I have given separate separate page numbers. Okay, you can see page number only on the top fifth page. You can see. So what is the first point here? All indirect taxes levied by central government. What are the indirect taxes levied by central government? Total four, huh? except customs duty, but including CBD and SAD to counterbalance what? Excise duty and sales tax got subsumed into GST. Understood? Then next. There were various indirect taxes levied by the state government. These are the various indirect taxes that were levied by the state government in the past. Even this also got subsumed into GST. But what are the indirect taxes levied by state government that got subsumed into GST 6? Number 1, value added tax. Sir, when value added tax on intrastate sale? Intrastate sale means within the state sale. Then purchase tax. Purchase tax, also known as octroi. You would have studied somewhere in foundation, final accounts, octroi like that. Okay. What is that octroi? Whenever we are purchasing goods from the another place, so for this place, we need to pay some tax, purchase tax called as octroi. Even now, that also got subsumed into GST. Okay. Then next, tax on lottery betting and gambling. So in the past, state government used to levy this tax on lottery betting and gambling, not income tax on winning from lotteries. This is indirect tax levied by state government in the past. Entertainment tax, which was payable by cinema theatres, and uh, actors, actresses, DTH service providers, cable TV operators, they were required to pay entertainment tax to state government in the past. Then luxury tax, luxury tax on this uh, hotel accommodations, three star, four star, five star accommodations. So luxury tax was levied by state government. And then advertisement tax on hoardings. So lot of hoardings we keep now, roadside and all. So, for keeping those holdings and all, advertisement tax was levied by the state government. These are the six specified indirect taxes levied by state government in the past that got subsumed into GST. So, can you tell me the list? Come on. Value added tax, purchase tax, lottery, betting, gambling tax, three. Next to three, entertainment tax, luxury tax advertisement tax. These are the six indirect taxes levied by state government that got subsumed into GST. Can you tell me any other indirect tax levied by state government other than these six? Think, think. Any indirect tax levied by state government other than these six? Is there any? Entertainment tax covered here in the list. Have you heard of something called as professional tax? Yes, professional tax. Have you heard of? Is it whether it got subsumed into GST? Municipal taxes, property tax, whether it got subsumed into GST? No. And there is something called as local body tax, LBT in Maharashtra got subsumed into GST? No. Are you getting this? And then even uh, we have some, something called a stamp duty, property. When we sell the property, some stamp duties are there. Whether it got subsumed into GST? No. You got it. So which means, sir, there are many indirect taxes even though, even now levied by state governments? Yes. Which not got subsumed into GST. You got it? And local authorities also empowered to levy the tax. That also not subsumed into GST. So what are the local authorities? I gave you know, some examples now. So even uh, you see entertainment tax levied by local authorities. You go to cinema theater. There will be some entertainment tax. Even today we are paying entertainment tax. But this entertainment tax is levied by local authority. Chennai Municipal Corporation or Bombay Municipal Corporation. They will be levying some taxes that not got subsumed into GST. In Karnataka, there is one tax called as Mandi tax. Mandi tax. Mandi tax means like uh, this uh, wholesalers and all will be keeping uh, some shops na, like onion merchant, rice mandis. Mandi means wholesaler, okay, basically. So, these wholesalers are required to pay some tax called as Mandi tax. Then in Kerala, there is something recently called as 
Kerala flood says KFC. You know, not that KFC. This is different KFC. So Kerala flood says. So Kerala flood says they are required to pay. Why? Because in Kerala 2019 floods came. You know, so much pathetic floods, landslide, a lot of damage to the state. And Kerala basically don't have that much of revenue. Why, sir? Because half of Kerala got settled in Middle East. Okay. And in the remaining half, 25% left Kerala for the sake of jobs, employment and all and they are coming to other states. Then only housewives, old people, kids, they are only there in Kerala. Okay. Now what revenue they will get? You go and start a factory, you know, the type of environment it is there, that it is a communist environment. Okay. So because communist parties only will be ruling over there and because of that what will happen? there will be conflict of thought, capitalist versus communist. So communist thought is what, why capitalists should enjoy the profits, give away the profit to the worker, because of workers only you are getting money. And that is also good thought, nice. And capitalist, are, are, it is my money, I invested the money, I have to get the return on investment. That is also a good thought. This conflict of thoughts only create a situation there, lockouts, then hartal, that is uh, you know, strikes, etc. and all. Because of that, lot of manufacturing sector got closed. So, tourism, lottery, these are all the sources of revenue for them. Liquor, lottery, tourism. Okay. And with this revenue, what they can construct? So, they cannot repair the damage that happened. That's why they levied some extra amount called as Kerala Fletchers. Like that, state governments and local authorities are empowered to levy any indirect taxes that is not got subsumed into GST. According to me, this is the biggest flaw in GST. You know why? Whenever state governments is not having sufficient revenue in the form of GST, what they will do? They will create new new taxes, garbage tax. Have you heard of this? There is something called as garbage tax in Andhra Pradesh. Yes, it is there. Garbage tax. What is that garbage tax? You put the garbage now outside your house. So to remove that garbage, so state government, you need to pay some amount called as garbage tax. You understood. Tomorrow, spectacle tax like that, they may levy. So those who are wearing spectacles, because Tamil Nadu CM is not wearing spectacles, so therefore others are wearing. Those who wear spectacles pay a monthly 150 rupees. Possible. Whenever state governments need taxes, they can create this kind of wonderful, wonderful taxes and all. This is actually a flaw in the constitution. So this should not happen. Today, okay, that successfully they are creating very good GST revenue. Amazing money is coming, but not the same for all states. You see the GST revenue collection. So top will be like Maharashtra, Gujarat, Tamil Nadu. Karnataka, like that it is there. But other states, Bihar, Assam, you know, Manipur, many states, Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan, Uttar Pradesh, even if they have money, they will not pay tax, you understood or not. Bihar and all, if you go Bihar, West Bengal and all, you are able to go and collect tax. Impossible. You know, if they need tax officer, go there. Here only we are afraid of tax officer. So, roving squad like that, lot of people are going, they will stop a lorry, ask EV bill, EV bill address wrong, okay, cease, 200% penalty, then only we will release the goods. All this over action is possible only here, there you go and do no, along with lorry he will carry one weapon also, you understood. So, very difficult to collect there. Now, what state governments there will do for revenue purpose, they will create new, new taxes, that is actually not good. Ultimately, the old mechanism only will come. So, why GST came here? In order to make it one nation, one tax. Correct? One nation, one tax. Nation is not one today. You understood? We have to understand the basics. Is nation one today? Definitely no, sir. Nation is not one today. Actually, it is United States of India. Correct? Different, different policies. Different ways each and every state will function. So, for one uniform civil code, you know, they are striving a lot. No one is agreeing for that. Now, we want, everyone wanted different, different treatments only. So, sooner or later, you know, we need to change our name as United States of India like that. 
and already Tamil Nadu started. You know, we want a separate country for Tamil people and all, separate country you give like that, okay. Like that Punjab people also started. Now, when everyone asks, no, we have to divide everything as separate, separate country and we should call it as United States of India like that, okay. Our kids and all future, it will be like that only. So, it is very difficult to bring a single tax, but that is a motive in GST. It's a very good motive that they created, one nation, one tax, but with lot of pitfalls. What is that pitfall? This is one pitfall wherein you create one tax, you gave a gap. In that gap, there will be multiple taxes, it will come. You understood? Because not all indirect taxes levied by state government got subsumed into GST. Even local authority levies also not got subsumed into GST. You got it? Now, tell me how GST is formed. Three points. Number one, all indirect taxes levied by central government except customs duty including CVD and SAD got subsumed into GST. And what is this CVD and SAD I have given there below? Customs duty is not part of GST, but additional customs duty is like countervailing duty to counterbalance excess duty and special additional duty to counterbalance sales tax are forming part of GST. Also entertainment tax levied by local authorities are outside the purview of GST, okay. So now I gave you the meaning of CVD, SAD and why it is levied, okay. Now tell me what is the first point, all indirect taxes levied by central government except customs duty including CVD and SAD got subsumed into GST. Second, specified indirect taxes levied by state government, what are they? Six, value added tax, purchase tax, lottery, betting, gambling tax, luxury tax, entertainment tax, advertisement tax got subsumed into GST but other indirect taxes levied by state government not got subsumed into GST and indirect taxes levied by local authorities also not got subsumed into GST. Is it clear? Now, this GST which is created by subsuming various old indirect taxes, whether we have single GST in India or a dual tax model. Is income tax a single tax model or dual tax model? What is the difference between single tax versus dual tax? Single tax means only one government will levy. So we have central government and state government. Only one government will levy, that is single tax. Dual tax means both central government also will levy and state government also will levy. Is income tax single tax model or dual tax model? Single tax model. And what about uh, uh, GST? It's not single tax, it is dual tax model. Why they made it a dual tax model? Simple, In think of a situation, think of a situation. If GST is a single tax model, income tax collected by central government, GST also will be collected by central government. Huh? Then what will be the revenue to state governments? There won't be any revenue. They need to get the share from the central government. When they need to get the share from the central government, it so happens that not every state government will have a government which is of central government. Possible? You take Tamil Nadu. In Tamil Nadu, will BJP come into ruling? No, definitely no. So because people will not agree, it is deep rooted here, either it will be DMK or ADMK. You may do anything. You, there may be corruption allegations, there may be MLAs, MPs who get arrested, any kind of scam, now liquor scam, Previously, 2G scam, it's okay. We need these two parties only. Because the roots are so deep that we cannot accept another, another new party. Same is the case of Kerala. Same is the case of even Andhra Pradesh, Telangana, Karnataka, okay. To some extent, somewhere like cat on the wall, this side and that side like that. Now, there are many states in India which will never have the centrally ruled parties as the state government party. You got it? Because there will be local parties, then they will never get the proper share. So there will be ill treatment, there will be stepmother treatment. It may happen. You understood or not? I am not telling that today the government is like that. I have lots of love and affection on BJP party. You understood? 
even i have lots of love and affection on congress party i like both you understood so i am not i am not on to this side or that side and all but i need to clarify that you know whatever policies that they are taking now we need to definitely know about that okay so therefore i am not deviating you towards one side or the other side it is your choice whichever party you like you put vote so i like nota i will put vote for nota you understood or not i don't want to vote for bjp i don't want to vote for congress also but i want to cast my vote so i will go and put on nota okay none of the above okay so i like that because in mcq also many times answers will be none of the above also so <laughs> therefore you know and uh, this particular you know i basically i like uh, you know this communist philosophy that's the reason why i am not satisfied with any political party today reason being everyone is eating away the public money they are not properly spending they are collecting crores and crores of amount so that's the reason why i am not happy with any government starting from independence so before britishers uh, like before independence i was not born so therefore i don't know from the day i was born what i have seen is that no government is perfect okay everyone has its own flaws and all no we can say na okay compared to this this is okay like that you know compared to rahul gandhi okay bjp is fine this is not democracy then okay then in democracy it should not be like that so both are corrupted but compared to this corrupted this corrupted is less corrupted we cannot choose that way that is not a correct democracy according to me okay fine but it's my opinion why are you required to follow that but we need to understand the policy what is happening here so as central government may not be there in every state then the states may not get the proper revenue that's the reason why states did not agree for a single tax model and in many countries we have single tax model you take singapore and you take many countries for that matter so there is only single tax model in gst only in few countries we have dual tax model that is central government also will levy and state government also will levy and that dual gst model we adopted from brazil and canada okay so you can see that what is dual gst model so dual gst model refers to what same page dual gst model refers to what simultaneously center and state will levy tax on the common tax base common tax base means what a common amount for example you go to a restaurant here and you ate food for 500 rupees on that 500 rupees 2.5% cgst 2.5% sgst common tax base is what 500 500 into 2.5 central government 500 into 2.5 will be state government okay and why dual gst is required because india is a federal country in federal country what will happen center also will have some powers state also will have some powers and responsibilities and so keeping in mind the constitutional requirement of fiscal federalism they created this dual gst model and india adopted this dual gst model from which countries brazil and canada you can just write down india adopted india adopted india adopted dual gst model from brazil and canada okay so now what we have seen two aspects how gst formed and what are the like what is the model of gst that we have dual gst model now we need to understand whether all goods and services got subsumed into gst or not so you can see that information in page number 10 you can see that information in page number 10 so tell me at present what are the indirect taxes that we have 
at present. GST, you know, major, major indirect taxes, GST and customs. But are these two the only indirect taxes? No. We have many indirect taxes levied by state government as well, but majorly speaking, GST and customs. Okay. Now, even after implementation of GST, the old indirect taxes they have not abolished, it is continuing. But for what purpose? There are some goods which are not completely into the ambit of GST, it is outside the ambit of GST. Number one, alcoholic liquor for human consumption. This alcoholic liquor for human consumption is not covered in the GST, it is excluded from the ambit of GST. Why is it so? Because from the independence, it was never a central government levy. So, on alcohol, it was only the state governments which was levying the taxes. We need to know little bit the fundamentals here. Actually, what happened? We got independence because of Mahatma Gandhi ji. You know that, na? You know that. Yes. Not only because of Mahatma Gandhi ji, many freedom fighters were there, but it boiled down to Mahatma Gandhi ji. Okay. And now, but okay, fine. So, we have to give the credit to that great human being. So, he went on a different line that is called as Ahimsa, Satyagraha, etc. and all. And uh, the people started a revolt, okay. And therefore, by that time, lot of wealth got plundered. So, today British is, uh, you know, telling, UK they are telling, you give back the financial aid that we have given, you sent your Chandrayaan to moon and all. If you have that much money, give back our money, whatever we have given to us financially. Yes. So, what we have received is peanuts, okay. Very, very less. We have not received also. What we received was 2011 something and that also not directly received by the government. That was received by some NGOs through, you know, UK government by NGOs, not government, okay. Now, fine, we will return that. Now, they should return the wealth what they have plundered from us. So, before independence and all, correct or not? And they have plundered lot of money and finally, whatever was left in that they gave, okay, fine, enjoy independence like that. After independence, we thought of making it as a democratic government. Until that point of time, it was kings, kingdoms, etc. and all. And democratic government should be the order, then only from outside some other person will not come and take over our country. So, that is the reason why democratic was the best form of government they decided. And Mahatma Gandhi ji created this Indian National Congress. And in this, so the basic objective what he want was liquor needs to be prohibited. Because of consuming liquor only people became dumb here. And that is the reason why they allowed other person to come and rule. So, therefore, we should first prohibit the liquor. But Nehru was not in favor of this. He, he said, states are running, like many kingdoms have the revenue in the form of liquor, on the liquor only. How we can ban this? We cannot ban and all. So, then in the constitution, they created a demarcation here. Central government will never encourage liquor. And state governments are given the option to, you know, have the liquor and levy the tax on liquor and slowly they need to abolish that. That was the objective when in 1950, okay. How it started that way. How it is going, state government now it starts selling liquor on the 2 rupees, 3 rupees, 10 rupees extra and that itself will be somewhere like 300, 400 crores of scam, you understood or not. So, therefore, uh, this was not the intention in the beginning. That is the reason why from the independence in the seventh schedule to the constitution, it was under state list, not under union list. What? Tax on liquor. And every revenue on liquor was going to state government only. What was the indirect taxes levied on liquor? State excise duty. It was going to whose pocket? State government. And on sale of liquor, CST VAT. CST even though levied by central government, but it was going into whose pocket? State government's pocket, which means from the independence, 
till today, that is till the date of implementation of GST on liquor, who was enjoying the tax revenue? State government. But if it comes into GST, what will happen? Dual GST. In dual GST, what will happen? Central government will take some levy, will put some tax. State government will put some tax. State government don't want this sitting with the central government. They don't want to share one drop also with central government. Fully, they only want to consume. Okay. That's why states did not agree for bringing alcohol into the ambit of GST. That's why. So, alcoholic liquor for human consumption not covered under the ambit of GST. And it is permanently excluded and sufficient amendments are made in the constitution as well. Okay. So, will it come in future, sir? It will never come in future also. So, already it is excluded. That is this. Exclusion is permanent. Then until that, like, when exclusion is permanent, when GST is not there, then what are the old indirect taxes that is being levied? State excise duty on manufacture, then central sales tax and value added tax on sale. Okay. But, sir, this revenue itself is more than GST. What is the maximum rate of GST? 28 percent. Okay. But the summation of these three is more than 28 percent. So, tell me that there is no GST on alcohol, good or bad? No, generally. So, good or bad from whose perspective we need to talk, sir? We are in India, democratic country. Stop thinking from government point of view. Think from the general public. What is government for the people, of the people, by the people? Okay. So, people, public, general public point of view. Any policy in the country should be from people point of view. It should not be from government point of view or one minister's uncle or father-in-law point of view. You understood or not? So, it should be from public point of view. So, from public point of view, you tell me. So, bringing, not bringing alcohol into the ambit of GST, a good decision or a bad decision? According to me, a good decision. Why it is a good decision? If it is brought into the ambit of GST, the rate of GST and alcohol will have come down because of which the price of alcohol will come down. When price of alcohol comes down, what will happen? Consumption of alcohol is happening. Even if the price is increasing also, our people are consuming. And moreover, if it is reduced, think of the situation, okay. So, in the place where they are having 90, they will have quarter, okay. In the place where they are having quarter, they will have half or full, you understood. So, that is very, very dangerous and that is the reason why it is good decision. But without knowing this factor, so one actor in Tamil Nadu said that in one movie, so GST is not there on alcohol, but on medicines there is GST like that in one movie who is a future CM candidate of Tamil Nadu. No, he is right now acting, but mostly after this movie and all, he will come into politics and he will become the CM in 2024 elections. So, that particular actor, okay, his superstar also and uh, superstar Vijay, okay. You do not think superstar, some other superstar, only one superstar, one, 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 number one, okay. So, our Vijayanna, okay. So, he said in that movie, but actually little bit research they should have done. That director is one stupid fellow who will copy four or five movies and make one movie, okay. So, he will not have mind. So, at least the actor should have done research. So, you also do not blabber anywhere that there is no GST on alcohol and all. So, it is good only no GST on alcohol because the old indirect taxes are continuing. What are the old indirect taxes that is continuing? Come on. State excise duty central sales tax and value added tax. Then, second, petroleum products. Petroleum products also not subsumed into GST. Why? Because you go and ask any person today, you know, in Chennai, you are in Chennai, huh? any place you belong to, go and ask a common man that, what is your comment about petrol price? Okay, what he will say, your petrol price increased. 105 rupees it became. Now you ask him, who is the reason for that? Modi. Modi is the reason. Modi is the reason. How? How he will become the reason? So means, still people do not know that state government is also levying. Fine. Central government is also the reason. 
State government is also reason. You cannot blame only central government here. You got it. Central government as well as state government. But this benefit which state government will get. You understood or not? That is they enjoy the benefit. But blame is on central government. It's good now. That is why state government said okay. It is nice idea. So, let us not bring petroleum products into ambit of GST. So, that if the petrol price increase also people are going to blame central government only. What is our problem? Because they are also living something called as EST VAT. It is okay. They can happily enjoy. Sir, one simple point I wanted to ask you. If central government is only levying taxes on petrol, then why the price of petrol is different in different states? Yes. Is it different or same? Is it because of the fuel cost or transportation cost, etc.? No. So, then in that case, in Tamil Nadu, the petrol cost should be very less because we are directly importing no? in through Bay of Bengal or somewhere in uh, Gujarat, the petrol price should be very, very less because we are importing from uh, outside the country. So, which means the transportation cost, fuel cost is less for import. It is not that. It is not the transportation cost. Even if the transportation cost, how there could be 2 rupees, 3 rupees per litre difference could be there from one state to another state. There are many people from Andhra Pradesh, they are coming to Tamil Nadu in the border area and all, they are coming to Tamil Nadu to fill the petrol and go back to Andhra Pradesh. Why? Because in Andhra Pradesh, the petrol price is high. And in Tamil Nadu, comparatively, the petrol price is less. Why is it so? Why how two different states in the border, there will be this much difference? It is because of the state governments having a differential tax rate. So, that is the reason why, you know, they do not want this petrol to come into the ambit of GST. Because the moment it comes into ambit of GST, can there be a differential pricing? Sir, you purchase one pen, sir. This is one pen, okay. This pen MRP is 15 rupees. In Tamil Nadu, it is 15 rupees. And in Gujarat also, it is 15 rupees. In Jammu and Kashmir also, it is 15 rupees. Why? Because the GST is same, there is no difference in the GST. So, if petrol comes into the ambit of GST, then there won't be difference in the pricing. The state government's revenue gets affected. That's why it is not brought into the ambit of GST. But central government did not agree to this. They said, no, no, alcohol we agree because from the beginning it was a state subject. Now, how can you say that petrol should not come? Then we will not agree for implementation of GST like that state said. Finally, so they said, okay, fine. Initially, let it be outside the ambit of GST, but as and when the council decides, it will come into the ambit of GST like that they discussed. Okay. So, temporarily it is excluded. For how many years? I do not know. So, the same point I was telling from 2017. Okay. So, 2017, 2023, even how many years it will be temporary, I do not know. And Right now, it is not into the ambit of GST, but this exclusion is permanent or this exclusion is temporary? This exclusion is temporary only. Then, until the time petroleum products are brought into the ambit of GST, what are the indirect taxes that will be applicable? Central excise duty on manufacture of petrol, petroleum products, refineries. We have refineries, na? we import crude oil and we do refineries. So, then on sale, there will be CST and VAT. So, what are the petroleum products here? Total 5 petroleum products here. You can see below crude oil, petrol, diesel, aviation, turbine, fuel and natural gas. So, what are the 5 petroleum products which are not covered under the ambit of GST? Crude oil, petrol and diesel. From crude oil, petrol and diesel. Then aviation, turbine, fuel which is used in the flights, etc. Then natural gas. These are the 5 petroleum products. Okay. So, tell me what are the 2 goods which are not covered under the ambit of GST? Alcohol and petroleum products. So, these are called as non-taxable supplies. Okay. These 2 are called as non-taxable supplies. So, what are the non-taxable supplies under GST? Alcoholic liquor for human consumption and 5 petroleum products. What are the 5 petroleum products? Crude oil, petrol, diesel, aviation, turbine fuel and natural gas. In that alcohol, will it come into the ambit of GST? No. And petroleum products will come into the ambit of GST? Yes. As and when decided by GST council. Okay. And until that point of time, 
so for petroleum products what are the taxes that will be applicable central excise duty central sales tax and vat in case of alcohol state excise duty cst and vat then look into the third one that is tobacco on tobacco products tobacco on tobacco products there is gst as well as old indirect taxes called as central excise duty gst is also there old indirect tax is also there that is central excise duty why is it so sir because they want to increase the tax levy on tobacco products because tobacco and tobacco products are sin goods means they want, they don't want to encourage that but they want to levy as much taxes as they want to on those things so it's okay it is not going to cause any problem fine let them levy let them levy 200% 300% on tobacco tobacco products you have any issue no na you are not consuming if you have issue means you are consuming you are not consuming so you don't have any issue i don't have any issue let them levy so no problem at all so central government is also levying and uh, state government will get the share how gst in that gst there will be cgst and sgst then other goods on all other goods there is no old indirect taxes there is only gst okay right now central excise duty is applicable on what goods even after implementation of gst petroleum products tobacco on tobacco products okay state excise duty alcoholic liquor for human consumption cst and what alcohol and petroleum products on tobacco on tobacco products is there any cst or what no what about services all services are covered under gst few are taxable few are exempt but it is covered under the levy but two goods are not at all covered under the levy that is alcoholic liquor and petroleum products see the illustration below state whether gst is applicable in the following cases kerosene oil whether gst applicable or not applicable applicable or not applicable applicable means it is not excluded from the ambit of gst why is it covered under petroleum products no that's why gst is applicable so justification not a petroleum not a petroleum product what are the petroleum products crude oil petrol diesel aviation turbine fuel natural gas in that list kerosene oil is not there so that's why there is gst on kerosene oil sale of kerosene oil is kerosene oil sold today ration shops okay they are giving it free no in ration shops not free we have to pay some amount for that okay fine so then I, less number of people only buying it reason being now everyone is going for this uh, gas stoves etc so kerosene oil is not required but in industry there is a consumption of kerosene oil so usually there is something called as paraffin like a chemical paraffin will be extracted from kerosene so paraffin is required for manufacturing various products so that's the reason why kerosene oil is being purchased or procured by various industries so industrial consumption is there in kerosene oil it is being sold today okay the next cooking wine whether gst applicable or not applicable applicable why is it an alcoholic liquor for human consumption just because wine is there it is not alcohol and all okay cooking wine don't have any element of alcohol not an alcoholic liquor not an alcoholic liquor for example if you want to know go to supermarket take the cooking wine keep it in your basket go to the billing counter in the billing counter they scan it and you see gst will come okay so there is gst because on cooking wine there is no liquor alcoholic liquor so there is gst that is applicable then liquefied petroleum gas lpg whether gst applicable or not applicable not applicable in your house jlpg is used lpg cylinder bill next time you check the bill huh? there is gst there is gst so why 
LPG is different from natural gas. Liquefied petroleum gas is different from natural gas. So, liquefied petroleum gas is not covered under petroleum products. Okay. So, it is not a petroleum product. Where we will see bills and all? Your parents will pay. Oh. See, next time onwards, no? everything that you buy, everything that is happening, see, it is the learning should start from there. You buy something, you receive some service, you get a bill, ask for the bill and in the bill you see the GSTIN and thereafter you see the product, for that product is that the rate or separate, some other rate is there, that service is exempted or taxable. This understanding you need to get in our real life, what are all the services and goods that we are procuring. Okay? And then automatically you will learn the subject as well. And even GSTIN, once you get, you search that GSTIN in the portal, you will know whether they are really registered, are they registered under composition scheme or normal scheme, because being a composition scheme, they should not charge the GST from you, okay. Then, what about beer, pa? beer, covered under GST or not applicable, why? Because it is alcoholic liquor, alcoholic liquor for human consumption. But usually the alcohol element in beer is very less, is what many people used to say, I do not know. Uh, I never consume, I know you also not consume, but general knowledge, okay. So in beer there will be less percentage of alcohol it seems, okay. But even then it is an alcoholic liquor only, whether it is 2 percent or 200 percent, whatever it may be, it contains alcohol. So it is alcoholic liquor for human consumption. Then what about cough syrup containing alcohol? GST applicable or not applicable? Beer. Sir, it contains alcohol. I said beer contains alcohol. Contains alcohol. It is not fully alcohol. Okay. But it is alcoholic liquor. So, no GST. Same way, on cough syrup also there should not be any GST. Not like that. On cough syrup there will be GST because even though it contains alcohol, but that alcohol is not for human consumption. Okay. Because just because alcohol is not available, say Gandhi Jayanti or some other, will the person go to medical shop and buy half liter of cough syrup and drink? Gone, he is dead, enough, over. So, cough syrup, you cannot take that much quantity, okay, and uh, say 90 ml, quarter, no, gone, life is end, okay. Cough syrup, 5 ml if you take itself, you will sleep like pig for next day morning till that, no? correct? So, where from you think of 90 ml or 180 ml of cough syrup if the person consumes, what will be his situation? You know, he will sleep before FR exam and get up uh, on uh, audit exam only, okay? So, that will be the situation. Definitely, it is not for human consumption. It contains alcohol, but it is concentrated alcohol that is not for human consumption. So, not an, not an alcoholic liquor for human consumption, for human consumption. Then what about engine oil? Yes, because it is not a petroleum product. Not a petroleum product. So, we have covered three things today how GST is formed and what are the various uh, that is model of GST that we have and what is the position of goods and services in GST. Okay. And uh, we have to see the other aspects. So, these are all basic aspects only and that we will see in our next class. And in our next class, we will also learn one important area that is system of credit. Okay. And our next class is on Sunday. Pa. Tomorrow we do not have class. Our next class is on Sunday. Reason being, you know, lot of students, online students, they enrolled very recently. We could not dispatch the book and all just uh, for that reason and I do not want to postpone the batch also. So, already it got postponed once. So, that is why I started today and we dispatched it, they might be receiving it tomorrow and 
day after tomorrow sunday we have so tomorrow anyhow if we take class also two and a half hours only and sunday we have okay 7 30 to 1 30 fine so our next class is on sunday and in sunday's class we will be covering one important area that is input tax credit and even we have problems and solutions related to this that we will be discussing okay thank you we will meet on sunday 7 30 am okay